been looking forward to uh, really all week and and we have been blessed hallelujah and appreciate brother todd bailey being with us this morning we're looking forward to what the holy spirit has to say through him this morning but i do want to make a couple announcements so i don't forget anyway but uh, this tuesday 26 is the last tuesday of the month so it is uh, prayer service so remember this tuesday at 7 p.m we'll be meeting together and and keep in mind also in the back uh, we have these cars back here these are not only for first time guests but also if you have a prayer request you can just fill this card out and drop it in the, in the offering plate and it'll get to me and not only will, will we pray for it personally but also during prayer meeting we uh, will get these out and as a group remember them so if you got a prayer request or something normally we, we don't get the opportunity to give a prayer request to church but that's your way if you got a prayer request and you want us to get in agreement with you over a certain issue, fill that out, drop it in the offering plate, and we will do that. Um, first, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, so we know that the first Sunday of each month, we do not have Sunday school, so everybody say, no Sunday school, next Sunday. So if you show up at 10, you're probably going to be the only ones here. But uh, church is at 11. And next Sunday, we actually, our youngins are going to do a little uh, show of some sort. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do, but we'll, I'll find out with you next Sunday. But they're going to do like a little puppet something or another. And then uh, the, there's no Sunday school. And we're actually, we're not going to eat next Sunday. Um, what we're going to do on July 3rd, we know Wednesday is 4th of July. But on July 3rd, that Tuesday night, and we're going to meet here at 7 p.m. And we're going to have food. And we're also going to have fireworks. And then we're also going to just have some activities. So, you know, write it down. You know, invite somebody. But uh, this Tuesday's prayer meeting. And then the following Tuesday is July 3rd, 7 p.m. Um, like I said, we're going to have food. We're going to have games. And then we're going to have fireworks whenever it gets dark. And I believe the fireworks in Louisa are Wednesday, right? Right? I know Jess said. Anybody hear any different? <laughs> but the fireworks, I guess the bigger fireworks are going to be Wednesday night in Louisa. So keep that in mind. And then everybody write this down. I'm giving you plenty of, plenty of notice. Uh, July 26th, 27th, 28th, and 29th. So that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Tentatively, we're still working on this, but uh, we haven't got all the details yet. But I talked to Jesse some this morning. We're going to do a... Uh, BBS those days Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and then that Saturday our plan is just to have a camp out day and we're going to get some cabins and things over uh, Boone's Landing and we're all going to spend the night Saturday night and then that Sunday um, the 29th, July 29th there will be no service here and we're actually going to have service out at the campground. So everybody get that? So write that down, 26, 27, 28, 29. But 26, 27th will be here. 28th be all day for the lake. We're going to do like uh, canoeing, fishing, stuff like that. And then we're staying that night. And then service that Sunday, the 29th, at the campground. All right, any other announcements? No other announcements? All right, Kevin, you said you had a poem this morning. Tell you, Beth, or God say, I see things you're praying is coming forth. I see in the spirit markers, a, spirit, a mighty visitation, and God's glory will fill this place. I see your heart, and I see your faith arising as you sow a spirit changes in finances. God's pouring in oil non stop, and deliverance is at the door. I expect God's spirit to flow stronger in things you sow in the resurrection seed. God will breathe upon your dry bones. I speak life. I speak life and wholeness in this church. And you'll see mighty move and revolver in this area. It's time to let loose. Step out in deeper water. Let loose in your service. And God will put the broken pieces together. Don't, don't give up. Shout grace. 
speak to the walls, and things that are broken will come together in more unity. Where God's love and passion will fill this place, and God's presence and new flow will come in this area like you never felt before. Will flood the atmosphere. Things are heavy, and the chains is falling off. Be ready in Revelation, cause God is faithful. Shout far, and God's spirit will visit you mildly. All who hear this word, be ready for old flow. I hear rain. On the dry places will be no longer dry. A fresh wind and a shift in the atmosphere. Don't quit when things arise. Stand on the rock of Jesus and let God comfort you. All is well. God trusts you. See as God see. Stay humble. I speak. A miracle of rain is falling. Step in on finances in every area of breakthrough. This is time and this is God's will for a double flow. And this is God's will for this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's take up our tithes and offerings this morning. And I want to this morning, and I want to encourage you. Um, uh, Brother Todd is with us this morning, and he's full time in dinner ministry. He, he goes all over. He's a busy man. And we're so thankful. We we actually partner with him uh, as a church, and uh, uh, you know he he made a point to come out here. He's very busy, and we're so thankful that he actually came you know out of his way to be here with us this morning. And I want to get, to give you an opportunity to uh, sow unto him, to his ministry personally. Um, you know, in the Great Commission, you know, Jesus stressed going to all the world, and either we go or we send somebody. But uh, if it's upon your heart uh, and God's leading you, and you just want to be a blessing into Todd this morning, I know he's going to be a blessing to you. Um, if if you want to sow into his ministry, there's or uh, get a tithing, tithe and offering envelope there in your seat. If you need one, raise your hand. But what I want, want to encourage you to do is if you write a check, just write it out to Bethel, but then get one of those envelopes and write Todd on the front of it. That way, when we get it all together, we can just write him one check when he leaves. But also, if you give cash, put it in an envelope, write Todd on the front of it. Um, because if you just throw cash in the offering plate, then it's going to go to church. But put it in an envelope, write Todd on the front of it, and we'll make sure that all of it gets to him. So once again, if you write a check, just write out to Bethel. But if you want to go specifically, write Todd Bailey Ministries, correct? And uh, write, write to Bethel, but on the tithe and offering envelope, put Todd on there, put it in there. Like I said, cash, do the same, and we'll make sure all that gets to him. So if you got your tithes and offerings ready this morning, go. The best thing for us is just put Bethel Church in that memo, put Todd, and y'all can write me one check. Right, yep. Yeah. yeah, that's what we're trying to do. That's why I say just go ahead and write the check to Bethel, but on that offering. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, just put Todd on the front of it, and then as you said in the memo, you can even write Todd Bailey too. And we just want to give him one check when he leaves. We don't want to give him a, you know, a wad, a big wad of stuff. Um, all right, so if you've got your tithes and offering ready, say so you believe. I thank you, Father, that you have blessed me. So I give. I give because I love you and I want to be obedient to your word. I give willingly from the heart. I give because I want to fulfill the great commission in this world. My desire is that the good news of the gospel of Christ be preached to the entire world. And I give in faith. Thank you, Father, for the return my financial seed that is sown in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all stand with us.
Yeah.
He's a master strategist. God is the strategist of all times. He can bring people into your life as He's bringing you into theirs. It might be for a moment, a year, a lifetime. It might be something. But the key is that you stay where you're supposed to be and God does things in direction and timing. Amen? So we're talking about that this morning. And I want to go ahead and read uh, James chapter 1. We all know the Scriptures, but it says, And James, the servant of God, and our Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. Now, at one time, you know that they were not scattered abroad. But usually, the three things the devil tries to bring in your life, regardless of what area it might be, to distract you or scatter you is a persecution, hardship, and affliction. Persecution, hardship, and affliction. Amen? But notice verse 2. My brethren... Now, how many of you are born again in here? Just raise your hand real quick. Just hold it up. I believe we got everybody on the left side. Everybody, what about on the right side here? Everybody, is everybody born again? Well, I believe we've got 100%. Amen? Just got the altar call done. Unless somebody needs to come up for prayer for something. My brethren, you need to put your name in there. Count it all joy when? When the University of Kentucky wins the NCAA basketball team. No, I'm just kidding. When, when, when Kentucky football actually goes to a national championship. No, I'm just count it all joy, sorry. When you fall into diver temptations. Now, I think it's interesting when you fall into diver temptations, he says count it all joy. Now, this word count, and I mentioned the last time I was here, is it's in the Greek it means to add it up and see what it equals or add it up and decide what it equals. So when the devil brings something in your life, the devil will try to give you a bunch of a, a, a different things in this equation, and it should equal this. Just like 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. But when it comes to God, when the devil brings in a kill, steal, and destroy, he says, when you count it, make sure you count it all. Count it all. What? Joy. He said the answer is basically joy in your life. Because when you get to that place, then you can go through anything because what? The joy of the Lord becomes your strength. When you fall into diver temptations, knowing this first, that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience, but let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask to God to give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it will be given to him. Now, I preached, I think, on that the last time I was here about faith and patience. But notice verse 6. But let, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in everything he what? Thinks, feels, and decides. In other words, the King James says, ways. Thinks, feels, and decides. So if you're double-minded, he said, don't even think you're going to receive anything of the Lord. That's why we can't get distracted with what God's called us to do. Now turn over here to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Let's see here. It's right after 1 Peter, last time I checked. <laughs> there we go. Verse 1 through 4. This second epistle, beloved, now writing to you, which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you might be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first. Now watch this. You've heard a lot of prophecies out there, but listen to this. Knowing this first. That there shall come in the last days, what? Scoffers walking after their own lust, saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the forefathers fell asleep, all things continued as they were from the beginning of what? Creation. So we're going to have a lot of people out there doing different things and talking about this and making you doubt and wonder and do this. Don't waver. Don't get double-minded. Stay focused. Know you got an expected end. It's like when we landed uh, in Columbus, I did years ago by myself. I remember we was about ready to land and the pilot took right back off. I mean, we were right there. I mean, you could look down and see the landing strip, the runway. And all of a sudden he took off, went back around to the left side, came back around. And people were kind of talking. You could tell people were a little bit nervous. And he got up there. And, I mean, you know, just kind of like. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, I just want to make it perfectly clear. Uh, I, he said, I just was. It was real foggy that night, that morning. I remember that. And he said, I just didn't feel comfortable where we was going to be on the positioning of our, on the landing strip. So I'm going to go back around one more time and make sure that when we come back around this time, we're going to be right where we're supposed to be. Well, I am loud anyway. And I said, you take as many times as you want. Well, how many knows I don't want to be a dead on arrival, amen? Come on, delay is not denial, amen? 
So I, I really believe that God is wanting us to get our expected in. But the thing is, is when, when you're walking and doing things with God, it's what, where He has you to end up is so far beyond you right now that you can see it. That's why you got to walk by faith and not by sight. Now, let me tell you a couple of things I want to bring up, and then we're going to get into two people's lives this morning, Jesus and the Apostle Paul. And I'm going to show you how they ran their course and they stayed on course and finished their course. Amen? Now, one thing I want to bring out is this. <laughs> is, you know, when I was growing up in different things, uh, well, let me just say this. I rent cars a lot. I got one out there I rented the other day. And uh, sometimes they'll try to upsell you. It's really funny. You just throw them off and they say, well, you'd like a GPS with that? And I say, no, I can get lost by myself. Amen? And, and they're like, what? How many of those old GPSs are not up updated? I mean, everything is not... If you're on a half a mile bridge, it tells you turn left at 300 feet. If it tells you turn left at 300 feet, you know you're not going to turn left on a bridge. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what's the word that they mainly use on the, uh, on the uh, GPS when you miss a turn? Recalculating or redirecting, but mostly it's recalculating. How many knows that we have a GPS in us and he's called the Holy Ghost? He's a guide. He's a teacher. He's a comforter. He's an intercessor. He's your standby. He, he will get you to where you need to go at the right time, at the right place. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. His, the Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So what I'm what, trying to get across is this. you got to have things because the Holy Ghost, if you miss it, because how many knows if you get off just a little bit, if you go quite a bit of distance, that little bit is a big difference when you get down to the other one. How many knows you can't gas at landing strips when you're laying a plane? Come on. doesn't matter if you stay the Holiday Inn Express or not. Amen? You know, come on. But the other thing I want to bring out is this. You know, when I was growing up, and I'm getting to a point here, I don't know about you, but, you know, today, kids, it's really different. You know, we got net, uh, Cartoon Network, and you got all these channels you can watch different things on and do this and that, and, you know, you got a program to where they left off one thing. They got like archives of all the things they've watched, haven't watched, and everything 24 7, cartoons of whatever. Well, when I was growing up, I don't know if, I know some of you can relate to this, and some probably think I'm making it up. But on Saturdays, if you slept in, you missed cartoons for the whole week. <laughs> or you could watch the old gospel hour and watching the Florida boys come on after. You remember Notre Dame football would come on here on Sundays, Errol Parsegian. Thing. I don't know if you remember. Then the Florida boys would come on after that. And they would sing the theme song to that gospel hour. We're going to sing, sing, sing. We're going to sing, sing, sing. I don't know why I remember that. But you know, Monday through Friday it was so hard to get up for school. But it's amazing how you can get up by yourself on Saturdays. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, you know, we watched a lot of different things and different things like that. I mean, Hong Kong Fui, HR Puff and stuff. I mean, all these different things. The monkeys. I mean, we watched a lot of different things. But what I'm trying to get across is this. A lot of things back then and now have changed, even the cars that we drive in. The cars back then, we didn't have cell phones, but man, they were like roaming areas of their own. Amen? You, you, you didn't sleep on pillows. You put the pillows in the floor to level the center axle out. The only time you've seen a, 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 the seat belts is when you shoved them in the trunk or you pushed them back out when you sold the car. Amen? It took two people to do that. One in the trunk shoving it out and the other one pulling them out. Amen? If you want to take a nap, get up in the window. We don't do that in the, in the seat. Come on. Only time you're allowed in the front seat if your dad slammed on the brakes, you flipped over. Amen? But how many knows that we had these things? I mean, we didn't even have videos. We, I mean, we didn't even have iPads or anything. We had a thing called an exosketch. You ever notice that? And just when you thought you got one really good, your dad hit a bump or a pot over. Come on, am I telling you the truth? But the one thing I want to bring out is this. You ever notice those one to a hundred connect the dots? Now this is very important. This is almost like how we run our race. If you do it just like you're supposed to, you can flick in the back of the book and it will match what's in the back of the book versus what's right here in front of you. Is that true? Are you all still with me? Okay, watch it. So you flick it back to the original author. It shows you, but if you do it and do it just right and have patience, then you can do it. But isn't it amazing that when you get around certain numbers, I don't know, 13 to 20 or whatever, it depends on different ones. They're all bunched together real tight. And I'm trying to remember if my mom said this or not, but, you know, there's times I had to have help. And it's amazing that you would just get frustrated as a kid and you just start doing it. You don't want to do it in ink. You do it in pen, pencil. So we would sit there, and if I got distracted, I would get frustrated, and I'm sure my mom had to come over and would erase it. It's almost like forgiveness. 
and go back. But she would work through a lot of times on those little spaces because it took faith and patience. And when you got through there, then she would let you go on and do it. And all of a sudden you go, all right, where's 37 at? Sometimes you're looking so narrow-minded like this, you're not seeing the whole picture. See, a lot of times we get so focused on our life that we don't see the whole picture of what God wants to do in our lives when we're running our course. How many knows there's other people out there that God wants us to reach? It's out of our comfort zone. Maybe it's out of our, our skill. Maybe it's out of our intellect to where we have to trust the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not to our understanding, but in our ways, what? Acknowledge Him and He shall what? Direct our path. So all of a sudden you say, okay, where's 37 at? Look outside the picture. So you look at the full picture and there's 37. Well, 37 is important because 36 and 38 is here, but 37 is out here. But when you bring it back, that makes a significant perspective of the picture you're finishing. Because if you flick in the back of the book, then you're missing part of the picture. Amen? Or the course. So when you get done, guess what happens? It, you get to 100, and it should match. But it's interesting why you, as a kid, you always wonder why the, everything was bunched together, why things are way over here. You only tell you why? Because it's important for the final outcome of the picture. Sometimes you and I are going to go through life to where there's going to be a lot of things bunched together. We're going to have things happen that we don't understand. We're going to have questions of why and all these different things. But it's important for the final outcome of the picture that you, through faith and patience, that you allow the Holy Spirit to use you to connect all these dots and do it. If you mess up, recalculate. Let the racer come out. God will forgive you. Start doing it again. Then God may ask you to do something that you're not comfortable with or you're not for sure about. Well, that's where you got to trust Him. Why? Because it's not for you. A lot of times what God's trying to get to you is not for you. It's for the people around you. Are you all hear what I'm saying? You're the resource. God is the source of what He's wanting to do in our life. Now, I want to bring out two, uh, two pit, uh, quick things here. Are you all still with me on this? Sometimes I'll just start preaching. Everybody's like, where is he going on this? I want to talk about Jesus, and I want to talk about the Apostle Paul. First of all, about Jesus is this. You know, in Genesis 1.26, what did it say? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three are one. And the one are three. Now watch this. He said, let us make man in our image and after our what? Likeness. Now watch this. How many knows in Genesis it says that, that that's plural? But how many knows when Adam was, uh, was created... He came out of the dirt of the ground. Now, I don't know if they breathed oxygen in him or not or whatever, but I know a, a substance was put in him that day. It was called spirit. You and I are spirit. We live in a body and we possess a soul. Amen? Amen? So there's a lot of things in our lives we got to realize and acknowledge because if we don't, people say, well, that's not going to hurt me you know, if I do that. Well, it's really your spirit because that's the substance that will live forever. Now, watch this. Adam came out of the dirt of the ground. Now, Eve, now watch this. Eve was deceived. Adam, by an act of his will, chose to disobey God. How many knows there was two Adams in two gardens? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45 through 48, and Romans chapter 5, verse 18 through 20. Talks about the first Adam came from the earth earthly, and through his disobedience many become unrighteous. But the second Adam was Jesus. He came from heaven above. He One disobeyed God in one garden, the other one obeyed God in the other garden. Yes. One said, never mind, basically. Another one said, nevertheless. He came from heaven above, and when he obeyed God, he caused many to become righteous. But how did Jesus even come on the scene? Well, how many knows he's at the right hand of the Father? He was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. He basically took off his robe. Now watch this. He took off, basically, the robe of the Son of God. Now watch this. He put off the robe of the Son of God and He become flesh. John 1, 14. Can you put that up? John 1, 13 and 14. It says, And the Word become flesh. Oh, I can read it. The Word I'll tell you one you can put up for me. It's Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8 and Amplified. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8 and Amplified, if you don't mind. It says, The Word become flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the only begotten, full of grace and truth. But notice what it says. The Word become flesh. So there was a young virgin Jewish girl named Mary. She might not have been the first one that Jesus came to. But she's the first one that says, Well, be unto me according to your word. She was not pregnant with the seed of man. She was pregnant with the seed of God. Sorry. You hear what I'm saying? The word become flesh. 
Jesus is not the only one not born under the bloodline of the first Adam. That's why He became the second Adam. So when they, He was crucified, they crucified an innocent man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what happened was, when she said, Bid it to me according to your word, He came and submitted Himself, born in a manger. Now watch this. He was actually born to die. When Adam sinned, what did Paul write centuries later? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So therefore, everybody alive today, unless you're born again, is under a poison bloodline. But when Adam came, and uh, the, Jesus came, He came as the second Adam, so you can be born again. And you, instead of becoming unrighteous, you become, uh, become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Righteousness is not what you have, it's who you are. It's your identity. When you're born, you're born male or female. It, it's, it's who you are. You're born again as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So what Jesus did when He came up on the earth, He walked among us as man. He was tempted in every like manner, but He was running multiple courses at one time. How many knows He had to come and redeem mankind? He had to uh, fulfill the old covenant. He didn't do away with it. He fulfilled it. He crossed every T and dotted every I. And then what did He do? He set an example that we should follow in His footsteps. I think it's interesting that when a chief apostle came to Him trying to get Him up back under the law, He rebuked Him. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. But a prostitute came up and sat right next to Him. And He looked at her and said, He was drawn in the sand. He said, where's your accusers? And she said, I have none, Lord. Now watch. He's recalculating her to get her back on course. He didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save it. He said, well, then go... That means get back on course. Here's the recalculation. And sin no more. Are you all seeing what I'm saying? God is using us in the world to go and bring a ministry of reconciliation to people. So what happened was this. When Jesus came up on the earth, He set an example. He was running all these courses. But you know, one thing He did in Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 through 15, this is one of the many promises that He had to do. Cross every T and dot every I. You know what He had to do? One of them. This is just one of hundreds upon hundreds. He didn't do away with it. He just fulfilled it to establish a better and new covenant. What did he do in that one thing? He said, and God said to Abraham, uh, I mean, uh, Moses said to God, Who do I tell him that sent me? He says, You tell him that I am that I am sent you. And this is my name forever. And by this name I'm to be remembered to what? All generations. So isn't it amazing when Jesus showed up in His earthly ministry and they asked Him who He was, He didn't say, oh, come on, I'm, I'm Mary, I'm Joseph's son, or whatever, I live down here on 3rd of Jericho. He didn't say that. He said, He always prerequisites with what? I am. I am the light. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am He who was dead but now alive. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through by me. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why? Because I only do what I see the Father do and I only say what I hear the Father say. Amen. See, he was setting that example. But Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8. Watch this. This is a very interesting thing. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Watch this. And be in form of God and thought it not be robbery to be equal with God. Now look at verse 7. But he made himself of no reputation and took on him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient in death, even the death of the cross. Now, one translation says, he was born a human being. He had to identify with you and I. He knows what you're going through when there's hard times between 8 and 13 on the connected dots is. He knows what it is to be way out here out of your comfort zone. But the key is, you got to hit the mark. And when you do that then you're going to be able to do what God's called you to do in this life is stay on course and finish it. Why? Because it's not about you. It's about what you can do for Him to reach other people. You know, one thing I, I was reading in those hard times, did y'all ever see that video, uh, YouTube video about the guy, uh, the admiral that spoke at the Texas A&M uh, graduation a few years ago? He said there was certain things that he learned uh, when he was in uh, Navy SEALs, he said one thing, he said, if you want to be a success or something in life, he said, learn to make your bed every day. He said, if you've had a bad day all day and you feel like it's been a total failure and you come back home, guess what? You've accomplished one thing. Your bed is made. I mean, he said a lot better than I did. But he said, one of the things that we did was this. He says, when you're going through a tough time in life or whatever and different things, he said, we have a thing in, 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 the, in the mud flats outside of San Diego where we did Navy SEAL training. 
They would bury you up to your neck in mud. You would sit there all night through, until morning. But if a certain amount of people would give up, they, they would literally, they would literally let y'all get out. And he said, we were sitting there and we were so cold that our, 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 we were, our teeth were hitting each, you know, chattering so loud. And he said, man, it just seemed like every, every moment it was getting colder. Our bodies were. He said, it seemed like morning was so far away. They said, but one guy started singing. Wasn't in tune. We was all still chattering to where you could hear your teeth chatter. I mean, we're just sitting there like this. And they said, if only so many will give up, y'all can go and take a hot shower and go to bed or something like that. You have to watch it. It's amazing. He said, this guy kept singing. And they went over and they started chastising and telling him to shut up and do this and do that. But he just kept singing, just kept singing, just kept singing, just kept singing, just kept singing. When another joined in, another joined in, another joined in. First thing you know, they're all singing. He said, we weren't in tune. We weren't in harmony or anything. But he said, all of a sudden, our bodies felt a little bit warmer. Morning seemed a little bit closer. And he said, they finally got frustrated and just told us all to get out. He said, my point to you is this. When you're up to your neck in mud, start singing. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Just start rejoicing. Come on. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just start worshiping and praising God. God inhabits the praises of these people. So what happened was, then Jesus got up there. Now watch this. Jesus got up there and he got in Mark 16 and said, Now my name, go do these things. He took off the robe of the Son of Man and put on the robe of the Son of God. Do you see what I'm saying? He put back on the robe of the Son of God and he went on his way and went back to heaven. Now he is watching over his word to perform. He said, I'll, excuse me, I will not leave you comfortless. I'll send you a GPS, if I may say that. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Now the other one I want to bring out before we finish this morning is uh, the, the Apostle... Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul. Now, I don't know if I've ever showed you this. I mean, it's kind of a little bit tore up and stuff. But this is a, a timeline of the Apostle Paul's life. The Apostle Paul's life. And the thing about this is there's over 300 different events in here of Paul's life. When it happened, what time it was, the uh, when the books were written, the historical events that took place, a year, everything, how it correlated with Paul. And one thing I noticed is these are not actually events these are actually, or, or things that happened, these are marks. Paul said what? I press towards the what? Mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Sounds like one to a hundred, doesn't it? Instead of connect the dots, we're pressing and hitting the marks. You know, when you get on your GPS, it'll tell you to go to a certain place, and if you miss it, there's a certain mild marker, or it'll, it'll, it, you go past that mark. Well, you always can come back. Well, when I was reading this one day, I started realizing at age 29, Paul had a road to the Damascus experience. You know what happened on that day? He was out persecuting Christians. And he got knocked off his high horse, and guess what happened? He talked to Jesus. Jesus he said, who are, who are thou? He said, I'm Jesus whom thou persecuted. He said, he, and he began to prophesy to him. He says, you're going to stand before kings for my name's sake. You're going, to, you're going to suffer great things. Well, you know what? During that time of life, Paul's life, do you know what happened 25 years later in Acts chapter 26? He has a conversation with King Agrippa. But before that, if I'm not mistaken, there was about 300 soldiers that took Paul in stocks and chains up before King Agrippa. Amen? Took him up before there. And he probably thought he missed the mark. There's times he sought the Lord, and the Lord said, my grace is sufficient. But when he looked up and seen King Agrippa, I believe he remembered 25 years before that. I think he was 29 years old, and now he's 54 years old. And he had suffered great things and all this. But when he looked up, he seen King Agrippa. And if you notice, the conversation goes all the way down to where it says what? Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. But you know what he said at the beginning of that? He said, I think myself happy. You want me to tell you why? Because I believe he got up there and he realized that all these things that he was going through, God is faithful and he hit a mark. It might have been number 37 way over here, but he knew he had hit the mark. Now he could go back and hit another mark. Come on, are you all hearing what I'm saying? Let God recalculate you by his spirit. Get in there, stay in that. And you know what Paul did at the end of his life? He got up there and he, it said this, basically. Paul got up there at the end of his life and I believe he hit 100 Right, I mean, not in years, but he had a, the mark, and he finished. He said, "I've kept the faith. I finished my course." He finished it with joy. 
But I believe the Lord gave him an opportunity to say, you can go or you can come. But he stayed a little bit longer. Amen. Thank God he did. But what he said was, he said, I've kept the faith. I finished my course. He did it with what? Joy. Amen. Now I want to read something to you before I finish here. I hope you all got something out of this this morning. Jesus, listen, Jesus made contact with 132 people in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 132 type people Jesus made contact in the Gospels. Six of those were in the temple and four were in the synagogue. The other 122 contacts were made in the fill of life. Out of 132, six were in the temple, four were in the synagogue, and the other 122 were in the other day fill of life. Now, how many knows that we? it's important for us to run our race, not just on Sunday mornings, but there's people watching us. You know, we all know that the Bible says that we are ambassadors for Christ. That means it's any authorized messenger or representative. In other words, you are representing someone else totally. A representative does not do or say anything on their own for only whom they represent. You know, Luke, i got two scriptures. Luke 9, 23 and 24. What does that say? We all know that. He said to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must what? Deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake is the one who saves it. But you know what? I came across a scripture that really, to me, brings that out a little bit better. You know what it is? Matthew chapter 10. Look at this. Verse 38 and 39. He said this, If you don't go all the way with me through thick and thin, you don't deserve me. If your first concern is to look after yourself, you'll never find yourself. Watch this. But if you forget about yourself and look to me, you'll find both yourself and me. Can I read it one more time? If you don't go all the way with me through thick and thin, you don't deserve me. If your first concern is to look after yourself, you'll never find yourself. But if you forget about yourself and look to me, you'll find both yourself and me. I will tell you something. All we have to do is recalculate. Allow the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, to get us back on course. And you say, well, why am I going through this? Why am I dealing with this? Why do I have to do this? Because it's important for the final outcome of the picture. And I don't know about you, but we have an expected end. And the one thing I'm waiting for God to hear one day is when I finish my course is what? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen? Did y'all get anything out of this today? I know sometimes I preach a little fast. I hope that was okay. I'm sorry. It makes you, you, you don't start drifting on me. You're just like, what? What did he say? Sometimes I like to preach fast. I don't mean to. Did I preach too fast today? Okay. Praise the Lord. Well, I'll spit on you a lot. No. Well, we gave an altar call. I mean, if you want to come up and get prayer for anything, if you need uh, healing in your body or, or, or different things like that, I mean, just let me know. Is there somebody that needs prayer for something in your physical body or you want me to agree with you about something? Or, or is there something? I mean, I'm, my thing is this. I don't like to make things happen. I just let God let them happen. Amen? Because there's times I just know things. I mean, by the Spirit of God. But there's sometimes people have to come up and act. And all of a sudden, the Lord gives you more after that. Because sometimes it's their act of obedience. It's not yours. Amen? Sometimes we say, well, I'm okay. Well, I believe if Jesus paid it in full, then you should live in the fullness of what He paid for. Don't live with a little bit of what He didn't pay for. I mean, He paid it full. Don't live with a little bit of what... You don't have to live with nothing. Amen? I mean, He said it is finished. It is. Anybody? Anybody need prayer for anything? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's just sit here for a minute. I'm not trying to make something happen. I just want to make sure we're not getting in a rush. Amen? Father, we thank You. We pray. I know everybody's got things on their mind and thinking, well, I hope He hurries up because the roast is going to go off in about 32 minutes. Or I got to go over and make sure if we don't get there by one, then there's going to be a line out the door. Amen. Then we get home and say, God, why don't you ever minister to me at church? <laughs> Are you hear what I'm saying? When you lose your life, you'll find it. When you look to Him, then you're not looking to you. A lot of times we got to allow God to interrupt our lives, but the devil wants to disrupt our life. You know what the word disrupt means? It means to break apart. Interrupt means to break into. Amen. Amen. Anybody need anything? Okay. 
Four, well, Nahum 1. Okay, Nahum 1 9 says, This affliction shall not rise up unto him a second time. So, everybody, just stretch your hands for it. We're going to add our faith to what's already been prayed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. The healing power of God is working to him now to make him healthy. We believe that right now everything is going to be functioning in the perfection to which you create to function. We forbid any malfunction in this body now from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, I command, even as we speak, it gives strength to where he's weak. Father, I thank you right now these, these signals are reconnecting. We thank you that the damage is being repaired. Father, I thank you you're making, you said in Jeremiah, you will restore the health. That means make it back like it was as, as if it was without any damage. So, Father, I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus, according to Mark chapter uh, 16, you said in verse 19, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Father, I loose the healing power of God, and I say in the name of Jesus, be healed now. Amen. Your tongue controls your body. Keep speaking. Keep speaking. We're agreeing with that. Amen. Anybody else? Any, anything else? Father, in the name of Jesus. Everybody stretch your hands towards your pastors. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We're not going to allow the devil to come in any way and thoughts and anything. Not that they are, but sometimes the devil will come and say, well, you're not, you got these inadequacies. You don't have this. You got this. You know, maybe you could have done this. Well, start second guessing you, getting all this. No, you know what? You just do what God's called you to do. And it's like Or Robert said that one day. Uh, we were in his house. He said, the dogs bark, but the train keeps moving. You just keep going and doing it. You know what? You just do what you have. Don't look back. Don't have regrets. You know, there's things you can recalculate, change, learn, do, and different things. But seek the Lord on things. Don't go by what people say and do and what you hear and there. Upon Him, begin to cast your every care. And there, Father, I ask you right now to give Him a boldness to step out and do both of them what they're called to do. Father, we thank You and we praise You. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank You for the anointing. That burden-removing, yoke-destroying power manifested in their life. We thank you for that grace, that enablement, Father. That sufficiency in that grace to do what you've called them. An ability that they have not in their own might or their own sufficiency. But your grace, because your grace is sufficient. Father, we loose the healing power of God right now in their bodies. We thank you, for Father, for clarity. We thank you for supernatural strength and rest in their inner man. In Jesus' name, and everybody said what? Amen. Amen.